after years of nothing, after years of being relegated to the sidelines, Kyrie was given a chance to exist, to actually do something. And the saddest thing of all, it's in a DLC that a lot of Kingdom Hearts fans didn't even play. Years ago, when Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, there was a lot of hype for Kyrie. She was the secret movie for Dream Drop, and hardcore Kingdom Hearts fans had just a little bit of hype for her. And after being sidelined in Kingdom Hearts 1, and locked away in Kingdom Hearts 2, she deserved some screen time. We had so many games without her. A prequel where she's just a kid. A spin-off with a better version of her. And an entire game where Sora and Riku get gay tested without her. She was waiting for a while, and the hype was building. Every few worlds, between the exposition about the lore players missed, between the Disney princess stuff, and Sora running around playing on his new smartphone, Kyrie finally arrived. She was mentioned a few times at the beginning of the game, but now she's here. She's got a cute new outfit, and her and the man who kidnapped her have been training together. They're hanging out in a hyperbaric time chamber in an undisclosed location. Some people think Merlin is training them outside of Twilight Town because of the forest that they're in, but we never actually get told where Merlin is training them. Only that time moves differently there. So Kyrie and Lee have a long time to get to know each other and to get stronger. They need to catch up to everyone else. And with the help of Merlin, Kyrie has learned the highest level spells of every element. She has learned to teleport and strike foes from behind. And she can dash almost as good as Roxas. Probably because she spent so much time with Lee. But every once in a while, he just stares at her. Lee can remember when he was Axel. But after Xion was destroyed, she's only a figment in his mind. An emotion. But her memory isn't linked. Axel can't access the memories. But he can feel the love he gained for her. He can feel the space that's missing. Axel is like Xion's stepdad, or big brother, or prison guard. He got close to her, and she looked a lot like Kairi. She became a girl because of the way Sora and Riku thought of Kairi. Kairi had no idea any of this happened, but she is the reason so many women exist in Kingdom Hearts. Namine is her other half, and Xion is a copy of Sora that became like her. During Kairi's downtime, they were less messages for him and more just for her. She needed a way to express all these feelings she had inside. All this guilt that she wasn't strong enough to fight alongside them. And all this admiration and love that she had. She wrote to Sora like he was her diary. And we only ever hear one letter, but I'm sure there's more than one. Eventually, it was time to fight. Most of the game was over by now. But everyone was ready to end this franchise once and for all. They were finally going to get to rest, to retire, so Nomura could replace them with characters Square Enix stole from him years ago. Before the fight, Kairi and Sora shared a moment. Throughout all the games, Kairi and Sora have been trying to perform a ritual together. They want to share a special fruit called the Paupu fruit. It's a fruit shaped like a star, and anyone who shares it will always be in each other's lives no matter what. Many people read this fruit thing as romantic. And many people ignore that and say, it doesn't matter. But I think everyone's missing the point. Kyrie says, I just want to be in your life. It's not about pledging their undying love. It's not a marriage proposal. It's not going steady. It's a friendship bracelet. It's a pledge for them to not drift apart. And Sora doesn't take this pledge until Kingdom Hearts 3. They never got to make this pledge. Kyrie and Sora have been separated for over a year. They have changed so much, and all while Kyrie has been feeling that distance. Sora has been busy. He's been dying, coming back from the dead, having his memories erased, being gaslit by a cult of anime bad boys, merging with his confused other self, surviving being possessed in a nightmare by an old man, and discovering ever since he was a kid, he had another guy and his dark bro lurking in his heart. Sora hasn't been able to deal with the girl who likes him. He doesn't understand love very well, and all he really wants is to end all of this. So he and Riku and Kairi can go home. He just wants his friends back. So when Kairi hands him a fruit and says, eat it. He isn't even sure what to do. We don't even see them finish the fruit. They both take a bite, and off screen, 
they might, might promise to meet up after the fight. After all their affairs have gotten put in order, and Riku talked to his robot clone ghost self, they enter the Keyblade Graveyard, and that's where the universe is destroyed. Everyone is injured by Terranort. Kairi tries to help Lee. They fight together, but Kairi is pulled away. She was grabbed by the Demon Tide and pulled into the darkness, trying to protect Lee, the guy who kidnapped her in Kingdom Hearts 2. This is the moment that Sora finally snaps. Everyone is dead. Kairi is gone. And without them, without his support, he's nothing. He thinks he's alone. He thinks alone he's worthless. But Riku told him that he's wrong. And thanks to Kairi's light and Riku's heroic sacrifice, Sora doesn't die with the universe. Riku held back the darkness long enough so Kairi's love could hold Sora together. With their support, Sora is able to save Riku and the others. Kairi and Sora met just before he returned to the past, and Sora felt stronger around her. Her support helps him thrive, and their magic combines together so they can save the universe. Now that they're back, things are a little different. In the original version of the game, Kairi doesn't get to do much. She's in the fight as a party member, but she doesn't do much to change the tide of battle. But in the DLC, she gets a few more moments, a few more important seconds of context that change things a little bit. She's the one who beats Saix, who catches him off guard. She's the one who stops Xemnas the first time. Yes, she's still a damsel, and that's a shame. But she got to fight a little bit. After all the warm-up bosses are beaten, Kairi is crystallized in front of Sora. Sora thinks she's dead. Everyone thought she was dead. He's too emotional. But a future Sora is burning every atom of his existence, breaking time in order to put her back together. He finds all the pieces of the crystal flower she was turned into, and she is freed. Everything is now full circle. Sora has saved Kairi just like she did for him in the first game. Kairi is now strong enough to fight by his side. And unlike Kingdom Hearts 2, she's strong now. And you can actually fight the final fight as Kairi. And it's fucking awesome. For three hours, I played her. I studied her moves. And I complained that I wish I got to play her earlier. I wish I could have trained as her throughout the whole game. I wish she was always a player character. And some modders have tried to give us just that. And I'm definitely going to track down every one of those mods and play them. And that's only possible because... She finally has moves now. She has her own playstyle. She's a glass cannon that zips around, blasting nukes in people's faces. And no one else plays like her. Aqua's fighting style is all about building power and then dealing a bunch of hits. But Kairi is all about unleashing hell and then surviving until she can recharge all of that hell and destroy them again. It's a really fascinating and interesting mechanic that needs its own game. And I hope we'll all get that soon. But after she and Sora unite, they use angel wings to fly around and destroy Xehanort once and for all. The war is over! Xehanort has learned how wrong he was, and the darkness has been defeated. Afterward, everyone gets their day in the sun. Kairi cries as Sora's sacrifice takes hold. He whispers into her ear, and he vanished. No one knows what he said to her. But, the most common interpretation seems to be a callback to Kingdom Hearts 1. When Riku sacrificed himself to bring their home back, he told Sora, take care of her. He loved Kairi like a sister, and he knew Sora could help her. But now that the shoe's on the other foot, most people agree that Sora whispered, take care of him. Now Kairi is strong enough to keep Riku safe, to return the favor. Now, many would argue, Sora lit out a generic, I love you, confirming the love that Kairi has shown him with her letters and her schoolgirl devotion to him. But personally, I don't think Kairi is just some lovesick girl oogling over Sora. I think she's a three-dimensional woman who has earned her own independence. I think she can be the hero now. I think that maybe she and Aqua can do more together now. After Kingdom Hearts 3, there has been only one release. Kairi was given a victory lap. For a year of her life, she has been searching her memories, trying desperately to find a way to save Sora. 
digging through the last few games and trying to uncover the truth. But that's a story for another day. If there's one thing you should take away from this incredibly underperforming Kyrie miniseries, it's that Kyrie is a three-dimensional character who deserves our respect and our outrage. She is better and she deserves better. Anyway, I'm Aloni the Bard, Kyrie Stan. Thanks for listening. Bye. Whew, man. When I was writing this script, uh, my power shut off. I wrote this entire script in the dark, this whole video. I came home and boom, no electricity. It was crazy. There was this massive thunderstorm and then bam, just writing a script in the dark. But this has been a really relaxing series to write because Kyrie has such little screen time. I was able to deep dive into what her story really is. I think she definitely deserves more respect, but based on my views being lower when I talked about her, I guess people don't care about her as much as I thought. I got more views on my Denix video. And that's a real shame, because I was legitimately surprised at how fun Kyrie was to play in Remind. And I would love to play Melody of Memory again if it wasn't constantly claimed by YouTube and Twitch. Anyway, if you liked this video and I managed to actually release it on time, which I did, here's a video about Xion. And here's one YouTube thinks you would like. Oh, and here's that stream I was talking about. See you loners later. Bye.